What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns, 5 Unexplained Time Travel Confessions. But before we get started, I just wanted to quickly mention that all of the clips in today's video are extremely basic summaries of the confessions that took place. Most of the full-length confessions are literal hours long, so we obviously couldn't include their entirety in this video. But if you're interested in checking out the full versions of these confessions, they're each easily available on YouTube and other video sharing websites. But let's get on with the video. Number 5. A Seattle man by the name of Andrew Basiago states that when he was a child, he along with another man named William Stillings were part of a secret government program that involved time travel, widely known as Project Pegasus. The purpose of this project was supposedly to help protect Earth from any threats from space, establish territory on Mars, and also make ourselves known to multiple alien species. However, one of the most shocking bits of information about this supposed program is that these two men allegedly traveled with none other than Barack Obama, who would have been just 19 years old at the time. In a confessional, it's made known that the project allegedly took place back in the 80s and involved a set of documents created by Nikola Tesla, detailing how a teleportation device could be created which would then transfer these men to other areas of space. Take a listen to a confession given by Andrew and let us know what you think in the comments. 1960, suburban New Jersey. Six-year-old Andrew Basciaco was about to have the most incredible day of his life. My dad called out to my mother and said, "Hun, I'm taking Andy to the hardware store. Instead, he drove me up to the old aeronautical company facility in Woodridge, New Jersey, a large defense technical experimental area that dated back to World War II. As they enter the facility, Andrew wonders why his father Frank would bring him to a place like this. I didn't know what was happening. Andrew's dad leads him to a secret room. Inside is something unlike anything he's ever seen before. It was so strange, it essentially consisted of two elliptical-shaped booms that were about 8 feet tall and about 10 feet across. It's a machine that's beyond Andrew's comprehension. Whatever it is, his father is clearly in charge. But why? And what is it for? Had the technician turn the device on. As Andrew watches, the booms begin to spin, generating a strange cascade of energy. That looked almost like water falling in a public fountain. It was a very beautiful sort of shimmering field of energy. As the energy field from the machine grows, Andrew's dad does something incredible. He tells his son to take his hand, then the unimaginable happens. We, we counted down, you know, one, two, three. On the count of three, we jumped through the field of energy. We seemed to be moving, and I could ultimately see a point of light in the distance. And that light reached us very quickly and accelerated. And when the light hit us, we were elsewhere in the country. Now, my father didn't tell me where we were going. In fact, we were jumping 2,005 miles through this mortal tunnel in the fabric of time space to the state capitol grounds in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so the, the unfortunate history of U.S. teleportation is that it has remained essentially a military secret ever since. Today, I am leading the truth campaign. I'm urging the United States government to declassify teleportation to allow people to teleport between major world cities. Raymond Lovelock is a physicist. He thinks the idea we can teleport our bodies is simply fantasy. It seems that the laws of physics are more constrained than the imagination of human beings. The first idea that we have when we think about teleportation is the Star Trek idea. Beam me up, Scotty. The idea of taking a person suddenly disintegrate in some form and reappearing up in a space station. Now, this is something that happens in science fiction. Number four. Al Bielek is a man who claims to have been part of yet another secret government operation, known as the Montauk Project, in which the government conducted a series of psychological warfare experiments at the Montauk Air Base. According to Al, during his time working with the government, he participated in multiple studies, including traveling to Mars, traveling to 100,000 BC, the year 6037, and even claims to have lived in the year 2749 for a couple years. He added that his memories of the event had been heavily suppressed, but that after seeing the film The Philadelphia Project, his memories began to slowly return. 
He concluded his statements by claiming to have seen the world overrun by a synthetic intelligence computer system after World War III breaks out, further stating that cities and buildings are now floating and the entire world was converted to socialism. Have a listen. Hello, my name is Alfred Bielik, more commonly known as Al Bielik. Original family name is Edward Cameron. We thank you for acquiring this CD. And the purpose of it is to present my history as I best have researched it over the years, as I have learned it, as comprehensive as it can possibly be. I have been involved in the Philadelphia Experiment, the Montauk Project, Time Travel, Alien Connections of the Montauk Project, and some other projects, all of which have been secret over the years, most of which have never been declassified. The subjects covered have been from the Philadelphia Experiment, the Montauk Project, mind control, some discussion of aliens, and related subjects. And they all fit together. They're trying to understand how they fit together in the complex web which is involved is really the purpose of the CD so that you, the viewer, may get some better idea of what information you have been, been denied by our government, been denied by the media, with a few exceptions, and give you a base of information so you can do your own research. Those of you who may be skeptical, because frankly the presentation is going to become rather bizarre as we go on with it, for those of you who are skeptical, I say fine. It is quite healthy to be skeptical, which means you don't accept either, either I or any of the other presenters on the CD say at face value. But go do your homework if you don't quite believe us, which is, as I say, quite healthy. Do your own homework, your own research, and I f feel confident that eventually you will understand that what we are presenting is the truth. But that is for you to decide. The purpose is to educate. The purpose is to get you to think. The purpose is to help you to understand things which you may have wondered about for years and which you have had only very sketchy information presented to you from other sources. We will go into the history of the Philadelphia Experiment, how it overlapped eventually into the Montauk Project, the people who were involved. Other presenters and myself will be such persons as <coughs> Preston Nichols, who was heavily involved in the Montauk Project, Mike uh, Stu Swerdlow, who is also involved in the Montauk Project, and connections with aliens, and they all interlap, overlap and interlock. Another man who is involved with the Montauk Project, Larry James, who, by the way, it is not his real name, but at his request, we will not use his real name. Number three. I'm sure you've all heard of the woman who's widely referred to as the human Barbie. Well, according to this woman named Valeria, she has the ability to travel outside of her body, into the past, future, and even different locations all around the world. In fact, she now teaches classes on meditation and out-of-body experiences, and is now often referred to as Space Barbie. Check it out. I that I planet Venera. But is a retired physics professor from the University of Connecticut and has supposedly been working on a time machine for a few years now. He's supposedly creating this machine in an attempt to go back in time and speak with his father, who passed away when he was very young. Because of this, countless members of the scientific community have turned their backs on Ronald, insisting that he's gone off the deep end. However, Ronald is insisting on creating the machine and is believed to still be working on it to this day. Ever since Ron Mallet was a boy, he harbored a dream of building a time machine. Today, he is professor of physics at the University of Connecticut and is ready to share his secret with the world. It's really such a powerful feeling to know that we're actually being able to manipulate space and time. And it's exciting because this shows that we may be able to control time, and that means that ultimately we may be able to control our destiny in a way that mankind never has been able to before. Wait a minute, if I can create the circulating beam of light, then this circulating beam of light can lead to a twisting of space, should lead to a twisting of space. And if it does lead to a twisting of space, then it should also lead to a twisting of time. For months, Mallet worked on his equations. He checked and double-checked the figures until he was ready to unveil his ideas to the world. 
While cosmic strings and wormholes would require an advanced super civilization with the power of the galaxy at their fingertips, Mallet claims his time machine could be built not in the future, but today. Number one. William Stillings, who we mentioned just a moment ago, was another member of the government program Project Pegasus. William was actually the man who claimed to have met a young Barack Obama during his time with the government, and states that he met him while working on Mars, though the president was using a pseudonym of Barry Satoro which really makes this entire story a bit confusing. The White House has since denied that the president ever has been to Mars, but William insists that he's telling the truth. So let us know what you guys think in the comments. The conspiracy theory, um, the article is titled Conspiracy Theory, Obama Went to Mars as Teen. Um, the article is sort of uh, complimentary. They are, uh, they are correct in stating that it, as in the article it says, it, se um, it seems that two government employees and self-professed time travelers, Kroninos, Andrew DiPiazzo, and William Stillings, have come forth and named President Obama as one of their own, along with the current head of DARPA, Regina Dugan. And, and this article covers the, uh, the fact that in the early 80s, we had, in fact, through uh, the U.S. government, had... had had teleported to the planet Mars as we had and had done so in a um, colonization program that uh, up, up to that date uh, over 90,000 people had in fact teleported to Mars we being by no means the first to travel there uh, the article goes on uh, basically the article covers that uh, that the White House denies that Barry Satoro or uh, Barack Obama had traveled to Mars, but does not deny that teleportation exists. Ah, uh -huh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Very, uh, very uh, interesting article. So, essentially, uh, you you and Andrew Basciago, uh, you Bichago, can be, yeah. uh, Bichago, pardon me, uh, can be referred to as chrononauts. Uh, time yeah. travelers and uh, teleporters, as in people who have used teleportation devices. Teleporties. Yeah. Teleporties, uh, yes. Chrononauts is, is actually a very accurate term as a point under the Shaka, yeah. Oh, so, I'll be uh, skipping it a is bit. A... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.